Hi guys, how's it going again? So, uh, in this video today I want to take a little look at being a mid-level developer. So, obviously I'm now a couple of years down the line in my career. I've been doing this now for around two years professionally. Um, and in that time, obviously, I've seen my personal skills, my interpersonal skills, my skills as a programmer, just my skills in the sort of business sense have all grown and sort of gone upwards, let's say. And there's sort of new things now that I'm discovering that I didn't really know would be happening before. And then looking around, I see a lot of information out there, say on YouTube, about being a senior level developer. There's a really cool channel by the guy called The Tech Lead, who talks a lot about his life and his observations as a more senior developer. Um, obviously, you've got people like, well, this channel and then other channels of that were started by people that were made and uh, they made videos when they were more junior in their careers and more junior level developers and sort of talking about that side of things. But as of yet, I haven't really found anything out there that talks about the, not struggles, but just about the life as a mid-level developer or somebody that's been doing this now for a couple of years, but they haven't been doing it for say five or six years. Um, so that's sort of middle ground. I'd say my first observation at this point in my career is that I'm kind of expected to be able to coach junior developers. Being self-taught and doing a boot camp and sort of not having that formal computer science background, I always feel I have this every single day, real like imposter syndrome of, should I be doing this? Do I really need to be like, can I do this? Do I know what I'm doing? How do I write a function? All these sort of things are always going over in my brain. But then suddenly when I'm sort of tasked with sitting with somebody new on the team and talking about something, or we had a project manager come on board not too long ago and joined our team and I had to explain to them about components and about uh, stencil and the framework that we're using at work. And I suddenly found myself confidently talking about these ideas and talking about coding and all this sort of stuff. And it sort of just came out of me that, cause I know it. I just know it because I've been doing it for a while. And in that sense, that's what I mean by by just being forced to share your knowledge with other people and by being forced to teach other people things that you're doing every day, you suddenly realize in yourself like, oh, I, I do know a lot more than I thought I did. Okay, so we're in a good place. This is all good. Another thing that I found that has come up quite a lot is uh, solutions during brainstorming sessions. And I mean, actually being able to add stuff <laughs> to group conversations or having your opinion valued. I, I That sounds bad, but in the terms of when you're having a group discussion or a group meeting, talking about a new feature, talking about something new that we might be doing or a current process that we're working with and how we might want to be changing it, suddenly when you put your hand up and you speak, people actually listen to you and they take your opinion in because you know what you're talking about. It's another one of those sort of like um, I'd say it's another one of those kind of uh, imposter syndrome busting ideas that I didn't know that I knew how to do. I'm now expected to take the lead on things. So, um, you know, the lead developers in the company or the seniors, they might sort of pull me aside, give me a ticket and say, this is yours, take it away. And this might be a ticket on Jira that has a lot of subtasks or has a lot of, you know, other areas that I might need to touch, but I'm just kind of expected to say, okay, cool, let's take this and let's go with it. There's not much hand-holding still going on in my day-to-day. -day. So you're very much expected to be a self-starter and just sort of get on with things because you're kind of expected to know what you're doing. You can also be expected to bring in your expertise in things. So if you've worked somewhere else or if you've worked in a, you know, if you've worked in a different company before your current job and they've done things a little bit differently there or they've done processes a bit differently or they've, you know, they might have worked in Agile Scrum or, I don't know, even if they've used a bit of software that your company or your team is now looking at using, you might be expected to consult and bring your experiences using that framework or that tool. Uh, whether you think it was good or bad, how you implemented it on that team. All those kind of things are expected to just, you know, come with your experience. And I think that's another reason why companies 
like hiring quite a lot of mid-level developers because they do bring a lot of new ideas to the table. So then going back, you will also be really surprised by your own skills. You'll be really surprised by your own abilities, like I am every day. Um, whether that be, you know, demonstrating stuff you've done to your coworkers, whether it be standing up in, uh, you know, team meetings and talking about a subject, um, whether it's going to a conference and asking an appropriate question. You'll be shocked by the stuff that you know and the stuff that you're sort of passively learning. I'd say finally the major thing that I'm learning now is learning to be humble. Um, when you first start, when you're a junior and you go in and your hand is being held and you're sort of treated, you know, gently, you're not expected to do great things, you're expected to fix a lot of bugs, learn quickly, just get your head down and work. Suddenly when you kind of find you've passed that stage and you're on to sort of the next area of your career, the next progression, everything I've said before in this video is completely humbling to me. Because again, I never expected that I'd get to this point. I didn't, didn't know I'd get to this point. When I first started learning to program, it was a very sort of like fun thing because it was brand new to me and I didn't, I obviously saw myself doing it as a career, but I didn't know how that career would pan out because, you know, I hadn't gone the traditional route. I hadn't done computer science. I hadn't been doing this since I was four years old. Like, I jumped into being a developer, you know, my mid-twenties. And I did it at boot camp and by self-learning. And then suddenly I'm now here a few years later. I'm doing all this cool stuff in my career. And I'm like... Oh, cool, like, this is this is where I want it to be. I finally feel like I'm in a good, stable place. And it's just humbling every day to feel that I've been given that opportunity to get here. And it's a bit of a more subjective, it's going to be a more personal level thing, but that's how I feel. Like, being in this position is humbling to me. So, in summary, I think it's really cool to feel that my skills are not only as a coder now, but also as a team member. And you also suddenly don't feel like the dumbest person in the room, at least externally. You can still feel it internally, that's all good. So again, that was my rant or sort of rave and musings about being a mid-level developer. Um, if you enjoyed it, or if you want to check out anything else, or you've checked out anything else on this channel, um, you should see my head around here. Go ahead and subscribe, that would be really cool. Uh, and then over here there should be a video where YouTube is recommending something to you. Um, and thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.